Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Define and illustrate level of significance, region of rejection, and types of errors in hypothesis testing. Identify the rejection and acceptance regions. And differentiate type 1 and type 2 errors in claims and decision. Let's have a quick review of our previous lesson. Write H sub 0 if the statement is a null hypothesis and h sub 1 if the statement is an alternative hypothesis on the space provided. The statistics teacher wants to determine if the average grade of incoming grade 11 is greater than last year's average. Statement 1, the average grade of incoming grade 11 is the same as last year. The same as, so this will be our h sub 0. And then we have here the average grade of incoming grade 11 is different from last year. This will be our H sub 1. Let us talk about level of significance denoted by the symbol alpha. Level of significance establishes a criterion or cutoff for making decision about the null hypothesis. It is the probability of predetermined error the researcher is willing to take risk in rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. There are three most common levels of significance. One is alpha is equal to 1% or 0.01. .01. Another is alpha is equal to 5% or 0.05. .05. And another one is alpha is equal to 10% or 0.10. Let's have an example from our previous lesson. Null hypothesis mu is equal to 17. Alternative hypothesis mu is not equal to 17. Let us say we are going to set our alpha equal to 5% or 0.05. What does this mean? This means there is a 5% chance of concluding that mu is not equal to 17 when in fact mu is equal to 17. So this means when you conclude that mu is not equal to 17, you are rejecting the null hypothesis. And the probability that you are willing to take risk in committing that error is 5%. That is the level of significance. Again, the level of significance is the probability that you are going to reject the null hypothesis when in fact it is true. And that is an error. Speaking of, we have two types of errors, type 1 and type 2. For type 1 error, rejecting the null hypothesis when it is in fact true. So this is the previous slide that we discussed. The level of significance denoted by alpha. This is the probability of type 1 error, meaning the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it is true. For example, the criminal trial in a court, type 1 occurs when the judge convicts an innocent person. Type 2 error is failed to reject the null hypothesis when it is in fact false. It is denoted by beta, the probability of type 2 error, meaning it is the probability of fail to reject the null hypothesis when in fact it is false. In our example, in criminal trial in a court, type 2 occurs when the judge acquitted a guilty defendant. Let me put that in a table. So I have here the decision. The null hypothesis is true or false. So if the null hypothesis is true and the decision is reject the null hypothesis, then that is a type 1 error. If the null hypothesis is false and the decision is to reject the null hypothesis, then your decision is correct. If the null hypothesis is true and the decision is failed to reject the null hypothesis, then that is a correct decision. But if the null hypothesis is false and then the decision is failed to reject it, then that is committing type 2 error. Let us go back to our example, the criminal trial in a court. So here is the decision and here are the possible hypotheses. One is the defendant is innocent and the other one is the defendant is guilty. 
Remember that this one is our null hypothesis and this one is our alternative hypothesis. If the defendant is innocent and the judge finds the defendant guilty, that is a type 1 error. If the defendant is guilty and the judge finds the defendant guilty, that is a correct decision. If the defendant is innocent and the judge finds him innocent, that is a correct decision. If the defendant is guilty but the judge finds him innocent, then that is a type 2 error. Let's have an activity. Where did I get wrong? Analyze the following conclusions. Identify if a type 1 error, type 2 error, or a correct decision was committed. You are making a conclusion on your research. You find out that your null hypothesis is true and you reject it. This is type 1 error. Your null hypothesis is true, but you reject it. Next one. You found out that your null hypothesis is true and you fail to reject it. That is a correct decision. What if you find out that your null hypothesis is false and you reject it? This is also a correct decision. And if you find out that your null hypothesis is false and you fail to reject it, this is type 2 error. Let's have another one. Age is just a number. Analyze the situation. Again, identify if a type 1 error, type 2 error, or a correct decision was committed. And then explain. You just celebrated your 40th birthday. Someone asked your age and you said you are 35 years old. This is a type 1 error. Why? Because you are rejecting the truth. Remember, when you reject the null hypothesis when it is in fact true, you are committing a type 1 error. So if someone lies about their age, remind them that they are committing type 1 error. This time, let us talk about region of rejection. The region of rejection is a range of values such that if the test statistic falls into that range, we decide to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis because this is the area where the null hypothesis is not probable. We have three types. We have the left-tailed test, right-tailed test, and the two-tailed test. This shaded area is what we call region of rejection. The unshaded area is what we call region of acceptance. And the blue lines here is what we call critical values. Remember that region of rejection is equal to the level of significance that is denoted by alpha for one-tailed test, it could be left-tailed or right-tailed, and denoted by alpha over 2 for two-tailed test. Before we proceed, let us recall that the area of the curve is 1. So if you know the area of the shaded region, you just have to subtract it from 1 and you have the area of the unshaded region. Let's have an example. Let us say we set our alpha be equal to 5% or 0 0.05 and it is left-tailed. To solve for 1 minus alpha, that would be 1 minus 0 0.05 and that is equal to 0 0.95. Now let us graph the curve. This area here is the region of rejection and it is equal to 5% or 0 0.05. This area is the region of acceptance, and this is equal to 95% or 0 0.95. For the sake of demonstration, we are given the critical T value. Let us say it is equal to negative 1.563. As well as the computed T value, let us say it is negative 1.356. So first, let us locate this. We know that this blue line here is our critical T value. So let us label this negative 1.563. Now, let us locate negative 1.356 in reference to our critical value. 
Is it on the left or on the right? And negative 1.356 lies on the right of negative 1.563. Let us label this. Notice that our computed T value lies outside the region of rejection. So what should be the conclusion here? It should be fail to reject the null hypothesis. Because this is the area of rejection. It is outside the area of rejection, so your conclusion should be fail to reject the null hypothesis. It is synonymous in saying accept the null hypothesis. However, in research, we do not say accept the null hypothesis. Instead, we say fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let us have another example. This time, let us say we are given alpha over 2, a two-tailed test, and it is equal to 0 0.025. Remember that a two-tailed test has region of rejection on both tails of the curve. So if this is 0 0.025 and this is also 0 0.025, adding these two will give us 0 0.05 or 5%. That would be our alpha. So 1 minus alpha again is 1 minus 0 0.05 which is equal to 0 0.95. So once again, the shaded area is the region of rejection. The area is 0 0.025. Both tails have an area of 0 0.025. And this portion is the region of acceptance, which is 95% or 0 0.95. Try to add it. 0 0.95 plus 0 0.025 plus 0 0.025 will give you 1 as an answer. Let us say our critical T value this time is positive and negative 1.563. And our computed T value is positive 1.635. We know that the blue lines here are the critical values. Let us label them. One negative and one positive. Let us analyze where would be 1.635 in reference to our critical value. This is positive. Let us consider the positive critical value. 1.635 would be on the left or on the right of 1.563. 1.635 would fall on the right of the critical value. Let us label it. Since it falls on the region of rejection, the conclusion now should be reject the null hypothesis. So again, if it falls on the region of rejection, conclusion is reject the null hypothesis. If it falls on the region of acceptance, fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let us have an activity. Am I in or out? Plot the given critical and computed T values and tell whether the computed T value lies on the rejection or acceptance region. Number one, we have here the critical T value 2.345 and the computed T value 2.76. Let us plot our curve. This is not drawn into scale. The blue line is the critical T value and that is 2.345. Now let us analyze 2.76. Is it on the left or on the right of our critical value? It is on the right, 2.76. And it falls on the region of rejection. So our answer is the computed T value is at the rejection region. Let's have another one. Critical T values is positive and negative 0 0.925 and computed T value is 0 0.514. So let us plot. We have here two tailed. We have two critical values, one positive and one negative. Our computed T value is 0 0.514. Is it on the left or on the right of our critical value? It is on the left, 0 0.514. It falls on the area of acceptance. So our answer, the computed T value is at the acceptance region. Let me put it in a table, the one-tailed and two-tailed test. I have here one-tailed on the left, two-tailed test, one-tailed on the right tail. 
Our focus for one-tailed and two-tailed test is the alternative hypothesis. So for left tail, we have less than. For two-tailed test, we have not equal to. For one-tailed test on the right, we have greater than. You already see the pictures earlier. Here are the common keywords that will tell you if it is on the left, on the right, or on both tails. Let's have an activity again. Telling tails. Determine if one-tailed or two-tailed test must be used. Number one, the proportion of TVL students is significantly higher than academic students. So we have here, higher than, and that means it is a one-tailed test. Number two, the average viewing time of male kids ages 5 to 8 is not the same as the female kids. Not the same. This is a two-tailed test. Nothing is mentioned if it is greater than or less than. Number three, the variance in the final exam of section B is less than the variance of section A. We have here the keyword less than, meaning it is a one-tailed test. Next one, the average income of professionals who finished a five-year course is different from professionals who finished a four-year course. Just different, nothing mentioned if it is higher or lower, so this is a two-tailed test. And last one, the proportion of people adopting pets is more than the proportion of people buying from a pet store. Because of the word more than, we know that this is a one-tailed test. Let us do extra challenge. Identify the level of significance and tell whether one-tailed or two-tailed test must be used. The population mean of IQ is 100 with a standard deviation of 15. A principal at a certain school claims that the students in his school has different IQ level. A random sample of 30 students' IQ scores have a mean of 112. Construct a 94% confidence level to determine whether there is sufficient evidence to support the principal's claim. So we are given here the population mean, which is equal to 100. This will be our null hypothesis. Mu is equal to 100. And then we have here the word different. So our alternative hypothesis would be mu is not equal to 100. Since our alternative hypothesis contains not equal to and the word is different, so we know that this is a two-tailed test. For the level of confidence, we are given here 94% confidence level. This 94% is our 1 minus alpha. 1 minus alpha is 94% or 0 0.94. So it follows that our alpha will be 100% minus 94%. And that would be 6% or 0 0.06. But since this is two-tailed test, we are going to divide our alpha into two. So we have alpha over two is equal to 3% or 0.03. It means that at both tails of our curve, we have 0.03 at the region of rejection. Here is the summary of what we discussed. Take time to read this. Now it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. Suppose a delivery company claims they deliver their packages in two days on average, and you suspect it's longer than that. To test this claim, you take a random sample of 11 packages and record their delivery times. You find the sample mean is 2.3 days and the sample standard deviation is 0.35 days. Test the hypothesis at 0.05 significance level. First, let us construct our null hypothesis. We have here, the claim is that they deliver their packages in two days. So our null hypothesis would be mu is equal to two. But you suspect it's longer than that. 
So this is greater than mu is greater than 2 for our alternative hypothesis. Since we have greater than, this is a one-tailed test. Now, it is already given alpha is 0 0.05. Gets? Our next lesson is identifying parameters.